In this video, I'm going to talk about a less known strategy when it comes to bag bounty hunting. If this is your first time here, uh, welcome. I'm Chris, I'm a penetration tester and on this channel I make a lot of uh, cybersecurity videos. Now, if you're into that, subscribe uh, and ring the bell to get notified of all my new videos. And if you want to become a penetration tester yourself and need one-on-one -on -one coaching, check out the description of this video and uh, get in touch with me. Okay, so in a previous video, I was talking about uh, one of my reference books when it comes to web application penetration testing. Um, and this uh, is really, this is also really relevant to bug bounty hunting, uh, of course. And I'm talking about the 2011 edition, which is the second edition of the Web Application Hackers Handbook by uh, the Feed Stutter. I hope I didn't uh, butcher his name. So uh, I highly encourage you to study this book if you're into penetration testing uh, web applications. I guess there are like dozens of points in the book uh, that I really want to uh, give my twist on. And if you guys are interested in that, please let me know in the comment sections below and uh, I might actually do that in, in following videos. Okay, so one of the points uh, that I'm going to expand on is the reason why I decided to do this video. So the point is about, so the pro tip or the point is about uh, isolating unique application behavior. So let me actually uh, explain. In my view, uh, when you're pen testing a web application, you're dealing with uh, one of roughly uh, three scenarios. So number one, you're testing uh, a complete non-customized CMS, which is content management system. So for example, let's say you have a WordPress website uh, with no other custom code uh, to give it like additional functionality. Or for example, you have a Drupal website or some sort of other very popular CMS forum software. I think you get the point. Now, in this case, uh, many of the web applications uh, these vulnerabilities, if not the, the most vulnerabilities that you're likely to find, are going to be strictly related to the CMS or the content management system or the WordPress, if we're talking about WordPress itself. And uh, also these vulnerabilities um, are strictly related to the up-to-date status of the application itself. Okay, so this is scenario number one. Now in scenario, there's like two more scenarios. Scenario number two is when you're actually testing a customized CMS. So what do I actually mean by that? Now in this uh, scenario, you could, for example, have a WordPress website. So I'm going to stick with WordPress here uh, for the sake of exemplification. Now you have a WordPress website and you also have like some sort of built-in functionality that you've coded yourself. So in this case, uh, this would be the added extra piece of code would be unique code. So the WordPress uh, part of the website could be accessible through, let's say, slash blog. Uh, and you could also have, uh, for example, a slash home uh, as a landing page that you coded yourself. And this, uh, this slash home section would be, let's say it would be interactive. Now, in such a scenario, the vulnerabilities that you're likely to find uh, are not only those vulnerabilities tied uh, to the CMS itself, uh, which might be very secure if it's uh, or secured if it's up to date, but you are much more likely to find vulnerabilities in the custom code. Okay, so do you see what I'm getting? Um, and for that exact reason, uh, we have also the number three or the third scenario that uh, is possible roughly speaking. So in the third scenario, you're actually testing a completely custom solution. Fellas, also check out my Python basics course that will teach you the fundamentals of Python. You need to get started in penetration testing. There's a, a discount link in the description. Okay, so in scenario number three, uh, as I said, you're testing a completely customized solution. That is a web application which is entirely built 
by hand maybe by uh, i don't know a bunch of coders uh, if it's a large app and this type of scenario is actually really prevalent these days because many companies uh, actually want to have their their own twist or their own unique app and in some situations that might not be i don't know that might not be the the most wise approach or the wisest approach because you, to have a great application, you do not have to reinvent the wheel. You can take a custom CMS and adapt it, which is why you uh, are very likely to reduce or not necessarily minimize, but reduce to a large extent um, the potential vulner vulnerabilities that uh, you're likely to inject in your code by simply by human error itself. Okay, so like I said, this type of scenario, a completely custom solution a completely custom made web application is really prevalent these days so when you're dealing with uh, with this type of web app chances are very large of discovering vulnerabilities such as uh, OWASP top 10 and not only so you might also uh, discover unique vulnerabilities yourself which is why you have to be open-minded and actually think beyond OWASP and put yourself into the shoes or shall I better say into the hands uh, of the coder uh, himself because in this case unlike a CMS that's constantly probed by penetration testers uh, and by security researchers this application has not been scrutinized uh, by as many ethical hackers the point pay close attention the point that I'm trying to make here or the point that's being conveyed uh, in the book is that whenever you're hired to pen test a web application or when you do bug hunting on a paid program or on a free program yourself one of the very first things you have to set straight in the recon phase is to isolate unique application behavior and determine whether or not you're dealing with either a complete CMS um, which is non-customized, a CMS with some added functionality or a completely custom uh, made web application. Now you can see this video in which I test the strength of a WordPress login form using uh, a popular attack tool. Also comment down below and let me know which of the three scenarios you've encountered uh, most in your practice. And uh, you might want to join this Discord server I created for cybersecurity geeks like you to actually have a place to talk about, uh, to hang out and to talk about the latest and greatest in the field. I would really appreciate if you share this video around so that YouTube starts suggesting uh, these videos to more of us. Thank you for watching.